Hey guys, welcome to another edition of uh, what should we call this thing? Uh, the 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 brothers boy talk Obi Wan. Uh, we we we're in week three of Obi Wan. Well, episode three. We uh, had two shows the first week, so actually it's week two, but episode three of Obi Wan and uh, Turn Away. If you haven't seen it yet, because spoilers. But yes. uh, guys. Darth freaking Vader is all I can say. Yep. That 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 was just amazing. The episode brings it again, once again, with the heart of the story. The character development was great. You know, you just you had what felt like an upbeat show. Um, for a lot of people, the book of Boba Fett was a, a downward turn in the Star Wars shows from The Mandalorian, and it felt like Obi Wan just brought it back. Yeah, I. I just disagree about that whole Boba Fett thing. People, you just can't make everybody happy. Yeah. Just be happy we have Star Wars shows to watch, you yeah. know. Um, Boba Fett Episode 3 was amazing. I, it just blew me away. Um, we see um, at the beginning of the show, we kind of get the recap, and we see they're on a ship, and it, once again, Qui-Gon, uh, I mean, Qui-Gon is huge in the show. He's trying to contact Qui-Gon. He wants to talk to him. He needs his help. He needs guidance, and uh, still no Qui-Gon yet, but um, I'm just wondering if we're going to see, you know, maybe a Qui-Gon sighting somewhere. The official, um, the official canon on that is that Qui-Gon never could fully become a Force ghost. So I don't see him actually showing up in person. You're not going to see his force ghost, but you will probably hear his voice. I have a feeling we will get Liam Neeson probably going in for an afternoon to record a voiceover for it. Yeah, right, right. And, and they'll save that. We're not going to get that right now. That's like the big juiciest piece of... Uh, that, that's that's an episode six thing where you're going to have to wait a few more weeks for that. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, right. Or, or the very end of episode five to set up episode six is, you know, how that goes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, really good. Uh, again, we, we're still hanging out with uh, Obi-Wan or as he's calling himself now, Ben and Leia. Um, which the young Leia is just absolutely adorable. She is owning that role for me. I think she's doing really well. And uh, she, wow, I mean, her face is going to be everywhere now. Um, she's always going to be young Leia. So I think Carrie Fisher would be very proud of her. Honestly, <laughs> I, I agree. And I, I think I don't. I don't know how much a a young actress like that would do any research, but it feels like she's done some research on Carrie Fisher and how she acted as Leia. Right. And the interesting thing is uh, June 4th, she actually just turned 10 years old. So she's playing a, she's playing a 10 year old and she was actually only nine or maybe even eight when they filmed this. Cause we don't know how long ago it was. They filmed it. Um, they started filming last year. So she was probably nine when they filmed it. Yeah. Yeah. And actually it's her, her birthday today. So happy birthday. Uh, sorry. I need to kind of figure out her real name. Happy birthday to the actress who plays young Leia. Yep. Um, we'll put it down there to let you know the name because I can't right. remember it either. <laughs> right. It's kind of sad. Although I do know the name of Sab who's playing Sabine Wren. Uh, I'm absolutely infatuated with her right now on uh, in the new Ahsoka series, but uh, let's not drift there yet. We've got that coming up. Um, so we kind of see, um, you know, Ben and Leia land on the planet where they were told there would be someone waiting for them. And they're kind of wandering around. We see a lot of empire there, too. I mean, we see stormtroopers and imperial flags, uh, which we know that logo. We've seen that logo for years of the empire. And uh, Ben looks over and he sees a guy in a brown cloak. And we get our first look at. I guess it would be Hayden Christensen, not in full Darth Vader makeup, but just uh, we know it's something in uh, Obi-Wan's head because he knows Anakin's still alive. Yeah. And uh, just a really cool reminder that he is, um, you know, he is Darth Vader, but he's still alive. Uh, what did you guys think when you saw him standing in the desert like that? Uh, it, it, it was it was a great character moment for Obi-Wan because you always see Obi-Wan as the, the tried and true and he's never shaken. And he was literally like freaked out by, it. you know, he he you saw that in his character. He was well, like, I think I think he views Anakin as his greatest failure and he 
he um it still haunts him to this day so that that was just the vision when he found out he was alive that it's just haunting him still the um anakin's there and the failure still weighing him down oh yeah and you, you see that play out in this episode too yeah yeah you definitely see it um we get introduced to a um I want to call him like a beaver or a mole man character who's driving a transport and uh, they decide to hop in the back to get a ride to the spaceport. And uh, when he starts talking, we realize that the character is being voiced by uh, none other than Zach Braff. Um, What do you guys think of that? Um, It made sense. Comedians doing these extra roles, you know, they did the one um, a while back on the Mandalorian when you had the two stormtroopers. And it was two comedians. Right. And, and the, the Stormtrooper thing has been a uh, legitimate role. We know for a fact that, I don't know if they got cut or not, but we know that uh, Prince Harry and uh, Prince William were actually Stormtroopers in one of the Star Wars movies. Um, and um, Tom Cruise has actually been a Stormtrooper in The Force Awakens. They won't, I don't think they've publicly acknowledged that, but it's Tom, Tom Cruise did do a, like a rock on as a Stormtrooper one time. Nice. And we also know that the current James Bond, well, I don't think he's James Bond anymore, but, uh, you know, he was actually the stormtrooper who Ray asked to let her out of her cuffs and turn her loose in The Force Awakens. Uh, yes. So that, that's really cool as well. Thank you, Frank. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, they, also, they, speaking of comedians, we had um, on the very first episode of Mandalorian, um, there was a comedian was up there too, and I, his name just completely goes over my head. I met the guy, and I can't even think his name now. He was uh, he was the blue guy that got frozen in carbonite, wasn't he? Or the no, one- no, no. He's the one that was um giving the uh, Mandalorian a ride back to his ship. Okay. Um, Brian Pusain. Brian, Brian, yeah, yeah. actually, uh, Brian yeah, Pusain, Pusain. yeah, I met Brian Pusain years ago. <laughs> right, right. He was actually on um uh Big Bang Theory. He was the geology guy up there. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really cool. We got to see him. Um, what? Uh, so we we get to a like I guess you would call it like a stopping point or something there. Checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. Checkpoint. And we got these lasers going across the road here, and uh, this is where things kind of go south. I mean, uh, so all these troopers come out. And they ask. Uh, Ben and Leia to step out of the transport, which they get out, and we see one of the haven't seen one of these in a while, but it's an Imperial droid, uh, probe droid, like we saw in um, Empire Strikes Back, come around the corner. And of course, Ben won't put his head up, he's holding it down under the hood, and, and they keep asking him to raise his head. And as soon as he does, he gets identified, and uh, a pretty much a, a gunfight, which we keep waiting. They keep teasing us. Yeah. Uh, is he going to pull his lightsaber or not? And uh, kind of surprising and kind of one of those things that uh, they I, I think was done on purpose. Um, if you if you saw uh, Revenge of the Sith, um, when he killed uh, Grievous in that, he used a gun and he, he made a comment he didn't really like guns. They were filthy weapons or something like that. And uh no, oh, and civilized. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And uh, he gets in a firefight with the stormtroopers using a gun when he's got a lightsaber hanging right on his side. But I guess he's still trying to keep that low profile. Um, yeah, they're 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 teasing you with that lightsaber. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Like, when is he going to pull it out? Right, right. And we want to see that familiar blue lightsaber right. come out and light up. Um, Hilt is still the same. We keep seeing yeah. that hilt and the, that familiar hilt that we know and we've seen for years. Um, one of the things I'm going to pick on this show a little bit, and there's memes already of it, and we'll probably throw it up here. When uh, he gets done fighting the stormtroopers, they have to get through the lasers. And if you look to the left and the right in the pan shot, all they really would have to do is just walk around the side of of the gate yeah. because it was more to keep larger vehicles out, but uh, he still goes and shoots out the lasers so they can walk right through the middle. Um, I, I kind of want to give it one of those, dude. All you had to do was walk behind the building and you'd be on the other side. Yeah, um, mild parkour, you could have got around it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've seen him flip, we know he could flip over that as he wanted to. 
And I'm pretty sure he could float Leia. He did it already in the first episode. Oh, so, yeah. Or the second one, excuse me. Um, then we kind of get to meet a new ally, um, which was a surprising ally because she was uh, dressed and working with a garrison of stormtroopers. And uh, there's been a huge ruckus made. One of the stormtroopers actually tells them to get down, and it's actually a female voice. I don't think people understand that the clone troopers are long gone. We're now using volunteers for stormtroopers now. Yeah. And so she was probably a stormtrooper who volunteered or something, or she may have been stolen and placed into service of the Empire. Um, but uh, the female who's in charge of them winds up shooting all three of the stormtroopers and helping them get to whatever little town they were in and is preparing a way for them to get out of uh, that area and get to a spaceport where they had somebody waiting to take them out of there. Um did you guys kind of sense and feel like the whole mood change when, uh, as they're getting ready to go through, when they meet a, a droid first off, which yeah. kind of reminded me a little bit of Lando's droid from the Han Solo movie that we saw. Yeah. Um, You're talking about the loader, the loader yeah. droid? Yeah. 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 But uh, as they're kind of trying to escape, we see some stormtroopers come through. But then we start seeing people leaving the town and going and hiding. Could you feel the tension building right then? You know, it it, it definitely gave you a sense of dread. That's really like they really did really put on Darth Vader that you don't mess with this guy. A feeling that you kind of feel back in the day. Well, even even before that, when they're inside that little hideaway in the back of the building and they're looking around at all the names that are on the walls, um, he reads, Obi-Wan reads one, and it's Quinlan. Quinlan Voss, who was a Jedi from the Clone Wars series. Right. Um, and and they brought, you know, they brought that character in a nice little Easter egg nod. Right. One of the things I failed to mention, and I'll kind of go back to, um, we kind of get our our, our first look, I should say, of, or our second look, um, you start seeing that lava flow and you know where we're going. We're going yeah. to Mustafar, which is where Vader decided to build his castle. And we see Vader kind of getting put back together after he's been in the uh, Bacta tank trying to recuperate, you know, because he's badly burnt and missing parts. And uh, seems like uh, back to baths are like a regular thing for him to keep healing. Um, how, you know, what, to me, it was kind of one of those moments where you just kind of got this super cool chill going through you when he spoke for the first time. Oh, yeah. When you hear James Earl Jones as um, Darth Vader, once again, after all these years, it was a really great sound. It's uh, AI-generated James Earl Jones, but yeah, they, it was definitely the right choice, basically, to give him the classic voice back. Right, right, because it definitely wouldn't have worked if we'd have had Hayden Christensen speaking with like a like a computerized voice. I mean, you have to have James Earl Jones, but uh, so we got to see that, and then uh, all this is going on. We also see what's going on with the Inquisitors. Um, seems like to me, Reva's not as powerful as these other Inquisitors. Um, they pretty much owned her at that meeting. Um, yeah, you know. Um, she seems to want power super fast and she feels like the best way to get it is just to bring Obi-Wan to, you know, to Darth Vader more, more or less. Um, and, 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 you know, it seems that Vader is siding with her, but I'm of the mind that I don't think the grand inquisitor is actually dead. I think they're setting her up. They may be, and that would be the ultimate, um, based off of what we saw in this episode. Um, I know that um, I talked to some people at work this week who've been watching the show, and if you think about it, over the past 20 years, uh, they kind of made Darth Vader this cute character. We see these uh, Daddy and Me books with Darth Vader and Princess Leia and all these things. What did you guys think about when Darth Vader walked on the scene and started doing what he was doing? 
it, it was reminiscent of 77 when he first comes through the fog onto the ship. When he first appears for the first time in cinema, that villain was back. Yeah, he's definitely a presence, a dark presence. Like, there's been, like, there's been some examples in the comics and in the, um, an animation of that, but just to see it in live action with that much presence and stuff, it's not just throwing people around for a second. This, this is, like, him, like, terrorizing an entire village and, like, getting to Obi-Wan even then. It's, like, really builds the tension for quite a bit of time in the episode. Right, and, and I, as I watched it again this morning, I kind of time-stamped it. A um, little bit before 30 minutes into the episode is when he walks into that town, and there's like maybe 20, less than 20 minutes left. Um, he chews the scenery up for the next 15 minutes. It totally becomes the Darth Vader show. Um, he proves that there's a reason why he is the most feared and hated person in the galaxy just in the first five minutes when he walks in. I mean, there's no remorse. I mean, no no hint of the little Annie we saw getting excited when his uh, pod racer started. He's just full-on evil. He's totally embraced the dark side, and, and you can see that. So um, moving further along, obviously Obi-Wan decides that, hey, I need to handle this, so he goes back. We know it's probably been 10 years since... Obviously, if you watch the earlier episodes, um, and I want to know how he knew exactly where he buried his lightsaber in the the, the sand planet where there's no distinct markings. He but the he, force. But he walks out and just digs up his... Uh, the force is pretty strong then because... And what's up with burying lightsabers in the sand? Didn't this happen at the end of The Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, those things are pretty uh, important. Don't just bury them. Someone could come out there and find them. And exactly. Zoom, you know. Well, then I have a connection to the copper crystal inside the um, lightsaber. So that's pro probably why he was able to fill it out. Yeah, some, exactly. Some, some guy, some guy in his Birkenstocks with a metal detector is walking around Tatooine looking for treasure. <laughs> digs up a lightsaber <laughs> or two <laughs> or three. You know, it's all good. It's all good. But you know, it's not going to be a guy in Birkenstocks. It's going to be those pesky Jawas, and they're all they do. Um, but uh, you know, we finally get to see Obi Wan pull that lightsaber out, and you see that clash of red and blue. I didn't realize how long it's been since we've seen that clash of red and blue. And how much we missed it. What did you guys think about the fight itself? Um, I, I, I liked the fight, but I knew it wasn't going to be the ultimate battle. That's going to come later in the series. Um, you know, you're, you're getting that, that tension and build up there that, that's needed to, you know, push the series along. Um, the, the, the fight was a lot of fun to watch, you know, down to the point of, just seeing just how evil Vader was when he grabs him and, and sets him on fire. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, definitely is not going to be the ultimate. I think that's going to be episode six, probably. Um, I love the way it was lit though, from the fire to the blue and red glow coming off of it and lighting up their faces and stuff. It just beautifully, beautiful cinematography there too. Right, and and just seeing Darth Vader's costume and seeing all the pieces and everything, especially in the like if you're watching on a 4K, you know we we think about what we had back in '77, but now just being able to see him and seeing him mobile because if you think about it, he just didn't move very fast like he does in this one. Um, just seeing a young Darth Vader being able to move around um, and and do the things he was doing, you know, we get that Obi Wan Darth Vader lightsaber fight that we want instead of what looks like two old guys just swinging sticks at each other <laughs> <laughs> let's not do too much with that though because like i've seen a fan redoing of that and they're like doing flips and stuff and it doesn't look very good to have uh, yeah i've seen that as well i was like oh yeah i think we've gone too far now we're playing too <laughs> much with it um yeah definitely dark vader i mean dark vader uh, anakin pretty much owned obi-wan in this fight uh had he not had some friends there helping him uh he'd have been in bad shape when that which which he was in bad shape he uh he was burnt a little bit and uh hopefully we'll see what happens in the next episode to help with that um 
But the kind of the end of the thing, going back to Reva, she kind of figures out where they escaped and uh, wind up getting Leia again. Um, she can't seem to not get captured. That's twice in this series. Now, of course, they kind of left her alone and uh, she was kind of hanging out on her own. So, uh, you know, who would be really good to have right now that could hang out with her and probably keep her from getting captured? Jar Jar Binks. No. No. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't think the lifespan of a of a gun gun is that long. <laughs> Who knows? We don't know how long yeah. they've been alive. But he was friends with her mom. Yeah. You know, of course, he likes to talk too much. He would give away too many secrets. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so. um but best best part of the episode, guys. I felt like you know seeing Darth Vader was great, but the heart of the episode when they're on that bus at the beginning, and the stormtroopers come out there and they're talking. And Obi-Wan looks at her and says, when I look at you, I'm reminded of your mother. Right. And we get that a lot, too. That's what's really cool. And, and we know who he's talking about because yeah. we actually have that. You know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we didn't have that reference when they talked to Luke about his uh, his father. And, and we have those references now. So um, that's really cool. Probably my favorite part too is just hearing everyone break down and t hear about the glimpses of his mother, um, of his, having a brother and seeing his glimpses of his parents and things like that. And he kind of wishes he could remember more about it. Like that was just wonderfully acted by Ewan McGregor. Yeah, it, it kind of you know I feel like Obi Wan is broken right now, and that by the end of the series we're going to see him be rebuilt because that's, that's part of the battle against. Vader this episode felt like he was just you know more defense than offense he was he was staying alive right basically. Yeah. yeah he he felt he feels defeated I mean ever since the um the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith they all kind of feel defeated because they weren't able to save the universe and there's a Sith in power now and you know they know they couldn't do anything and they tried and they lost so many friends during the battle and most of the Jedi order is gone now. So, um, yeah, I think the revelation of him having a brother was pretty interesting because I mean, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Apparently it's in star Wars lore, but you know, it's something that I've never heard about. And I thought that was really cool. I'm like, wow, you know, could we see Obi-Wan's brother at some time? Might he show up? Yeah. Inter interesting side note, Ewan McGregor's brother is a pilot, and his call sign is OB2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, um, if you watch the first two episodes, Ewan's daughter is actually in episode two. She plays the pink-haired spice dealer who was trying to sell him spice in that episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know, family family is in there. Well, uh, obviously we know you and McGregor's family's been around since the original Star Wars because his uncle was uh Biggs. So uh we, we um see you and McGregor, this is a little off topic, but um I am from Rocky Mal and um his wife is actually from this town. I don't think she really claims it anymore, but yeah, I know her family still lives around here if I, I think, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is his wife, and uh, yeah. she is getting ready to be in something. I can't remember if it was Star Wars or something else, some big Marvel thing. Actually, it might be a Marvel thing. Um, I'll have to look it up and see. Um, but uh, she's already been in uh, a DC she's, movie. She she's going to be in a Star Yes, that's right. She is going to be in a Star is what I had heard. So uh, keep, keep getting that family in there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, my husband's Obi Wan. Do you think you could put me in a Star Wars show? Yeah. Sure. Come on. Um, yeah, I love her acting too. She's great. Um, if you've never seen uh, Scott Pilgrim versus uh, the World, I believe it is. Check that yes. out. She's really good in that. Um, she's also plays uh, John McClane's daughter in uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. No, no, I'm sorry. Die Hard. Uh, Live free or Die Hard. There's so many now. You yeah. know. Yeah. Unfortunately, twenty three are the best best ones, but in my opinion, but yeah, absolutely, <laughs> we're way off topic here. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, 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 uh, so, we're swirling. So, thoughts, guys, with the the end of the episode with Leia getting caught, um, we saw the guy there laying on the ground. His eyes actually open, so we know he's not dead. 
Um, but I don't know if that's the pilot she was going to meet or if that's just someone who was there. Are there any thoughts about who you guys think the pilot could be that's going to help them get off this planet? <laughs> Lando Calrissian, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know that he would be old enough. So Kyle Katarn? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about him. I also thought about Hera. Harrison Dula would be a great yeah. addition. Yeah, Hera would be a good one. Have yeah. him pick him up with the ghost. Right, right. Are, are we in the era where we could have a Harry yet, or are we? We, we are because we are, it, yeah, it's Rebels era right now with where they're at. Yeah, I think we're like Rebels was maybe five years before, so yeah, you know, yeah, we could go back five years. We don't know how long Harry, Harry's alive, or why not? We just have uh, Ahsoka show up and take them because we know she's there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, we we hope that she would show up at some point in time as kind of a uh, transition into her era as well. Um, so yeah, so uh, all in all, a great episode this week. I I, I don't doubt that we're going to not keep getting great episodes um, because it's Star Wars, and we always get good episodes. Um, I'm excited for Wednesday. You know, we kind of got a double double header this Wednesday because uh, Marvel is actually starting a new show this Wednesday as well. We're going to get uh, Miss Marvel, so uh, oh, wow. maybe, we'll, yeah, right. <laughs> maybe we'll have a double discussion next week and talk about Miss Marvel and um, Obi-Wan. Obi uh, as you can see, Josh and I are coming to you live from the planet Alderaan um, yeah. pre-explosion days. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I'm coming live from you behind a wall of DVDs. So <laughs> it's the Jedi Temple. It's the library, Daniel. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the Pre-young, yeah. uh, pre yeah. uh, pre youngling killed days. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, hope you all have a great week. Uh, keep watching those shows. Keep reading comics, and uh, we're going to end this here and. Uh, until you we you see us again, uh, we will see you at the shop, and may the force be with you.